Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to look at a special property that relates to half-lives and exponential decay, where the rate of decay is always equal to the natural log of 2 divided by the half-life value that you have. So I want to just show a, a quick proof of this. Um, the idea is that if we're dealing, let's say, with radioactive decay, the mass that we have based on the function of, as a function of time equals the initial mass, m sub 0, times e to the negative rt, where r is a rate and t is a given time. But if we're looking at a half-life, that's the amount of time it takes for the substance to break down to half, h is a time value. So if I plug in h to our formula, right here, exponential decay, we get negative r times, well, it was t before, now it's times h. And if we have a half-life, that means that half-life is passed, we'll have reached half of our initial mass. So half of m sub 0. And now we can just focus on this equation right here. So if we're dealing with this equation, let me just kind of copy this right here. Oh, it's not going to work. All right. If we're dealing with this equation right here, what can we cancel out? Well, the two initial masses, if we divide that on both sides, they cancel out. And what's left? e to the negative rh. OK. Equals a half. A half is just 2 to the negative 1. Same thing. And if I take the natural log of both sides, e to the negative rh, and the natural log of 2 to the negative 1, I can apply a law of exponents to multiply these exponents down. And I get this statement right here. Uh, negative rh times the natural log of e. Right? Put parentheses there. The natural log of e is just 1. So this is negative rh equals negative 1 times the natural log of 2. And if we go back to our goal for our proof, let's go back up here, we're trying to show that r equals the natural log of 2 over h. So let's get r all by itself. I can do that by dividing by negative h on both sides of our equations. On the left-hand side right here, the h's cancel out and the negatives cancel out. And all that's left is r. So we've isolated r. On the right-hand side of the equation, the negatives cancel out. And what we're left with is the natural log of 2 over h. So it turns out, if you're given the half-life of any substance, that the decay rate, r, is always equal to the natural log of 2 divided by the half-life that you're given in time. All right, I hope that helped.